Amen. Daniel chapter number 10. Look at verse number 12. Daniel chapter 10, verse number 12. Page 1150, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So we have, we have an enemy that's trying to interfere with us hearing from God. Amen. He, 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 he's not going to just allow you to just, you know, without any uh, uh, interference, just hear from God. Because that's going to destroy his kingdom. And so he's there to put roadblocks in our way, to put obstacles there to prevent us from hearing from God. Daniel chapter 10, look at verse number 12. Daniel chapter 10, verse number 12. Look what he says. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there uh, with the kings of Persia. So for 21 days, the, Daniel's prayer was withheld because he had an adversary that was trying to keep it from him. But the angel tells Daniel, from the first day, God heard you. God heard, God heard you the first day. But that was a little opposition between God and you that slowed down the process so that you couldn't get your prayer answered. But we broke through. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So when you feel like your prayers are not being answered, know that it, God wants to answer your prayer. Amen. God, look, God heard you, and he wants to answer your prayer. But it could be satanic interference that's keeping you from getting the answer. Amen. Now, that's why I encourage people all the time to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because, see, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you speak with other tongues, the devil can't stop that. He have no understanding, amen? Uh, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it scrambles his radar system. Amen. When he tries, to, he tries to block your prayer, but because you're praying in the Spirit and God says, I understand it. Amen. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 just to show you. I got to just show you the scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Amen. Yeah, I pray in the Holy Spirit to prevent the satanic interference from, from, from messing with my prayer life and from me hearing from God. Because when I pray in the Spirit, I'm praying the perfect will of God. Amen. And that's why I can't understand why, why believers want to run away from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, I, we don't do that over here at this church. We don't, we, don't, we don't speak in other tongues. Well, why not? I mean, it's in the Bible, isn't it? I mean, the only reason why you don't is because you just don't know. Amen. But once you get a full understanding of what God says is possible for you because you're filled with the Holy Spirit, oh, you'll be running to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 14. Amen. Look at verse number two. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse number two. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. The Amplifier says, For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men but to God, for no one understands or catches his meaning, because in the Holy Spirit he utters secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. Amen. Amen. So the devil can't catch my meaning when I'm praying in tongues. Amen. Because I'm speaking secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. Praise the Lord. Now, I was just talking to somebody the other day, and I was sharing with them about being filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, I, I, and, I, and I told them, I said, well, have you ever gotten to a place in your, in your, in your prayer life where you ran out of words to say? You know, you used all of your ebonics. You use all your, you know, all your Greek and your Hebrew, and you just ran out of words. You know, you're like, but something on the inside of you said, there's something else you need to communicate to the Father. And I mean, you just ran out of words. Well, see, this is when the Holy Spirit kicks in, when you start speaking in other tongues, because your spirit begins to pray. See, when, you, when you're praying in your English language, your understanding is praying. 
But when you pray in the spirit, it's your spirit man. You pray in other tongues, your spirit man's praying. And he says, the Bible says that you're praying the perfect will of God for your life. Amen, amen. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Now, let's, 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 let's develop your calling. Let's, let's develop your calling. Amen. All right. If you're going to develop whatever God called you to do, you have to be obsessed with it. Amen. You have to be obsessed with your calling. Whatever that call is, you got to be obsessed with it. I mean, you got to look, you got to press through every situation, every obstacle, have an obsession with it. Amen. Secondly, remove any distractions. Remove any distractions in your life. Amen. Now, go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Remove any distractions. Amen. If you're going to develop your calling, whatever it is, whatever God called you to do, whatever God told you to do, because we found out that God can speak through you audibly, you know, where you can hear God. We found out that God can speak to you through your family, what God's doing, doing through your family. God can call you based upon the desires of your heart, or God can call you based upon what the authority that you're sitting under. Amen? But I have to have an obsession about it. Not only that, but I have to remove any distractions. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. <clears throat> Look at verse number 35. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 35. <laughs> Look what it says. And this I speak for your, pro your own profit. Not that I, I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distractions. You got to attend to the Lord without distractions. Amen. Now, we found it, we, we see in the Word of God that Solomon got distracted by them 700 wives and 300 concubines. Amen. He compromised. We found that Achan got distracted. Amen. With his personal agenda trying to take God's stuff. We found that Eve got distracted when she allowed close friendship with the ungodly to corrupt her thinking. <laughs> Amen. We found that Martha got distracted when she, uh, she was uh, inappropriate work for the kingdom at the expense of true growth. She was working when she should have been sitting listening to Jesus. And the disciples got distracted. Amen. When they allowed comp competitive jealousy to get in the way. So we got we to we gotta, we gotta watch these distractions. Amen. Whatever's distracting you from the call of God, you need to, you need to cut it out. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 The next thing. If I'm going to develop my calling, I can never consider any other option. Amen. If God has called me to preach, I cannot consider anything other than preaching. Amen. You, you, I mean, you can't. Nothing else will qualify. If God called you to preach, you got to preach. It's just that simple. Well, you know, I'll be a good usher. That's not what God called you. Amen. Well, you know, I'll be, I'll, I'll be a good, I'll be a good deacon, Pastor. Well, well why, why are you gonna be a deacon and God call you to preach? See, that's why I don't understand. Well, you know, well, well, well God call me, well, if God call you, there is no other option. Amen. I mean, you got to get rid of every other option that goes contrary to what God has said. Amen. Praise the Lord. I see guys all the time, well, you know, I really don't want to do that one. You know, I, I, I want to I wanna just do this, you know. And, and I said, well, what did God say? You, well, he told me to do that other thing. Well, God ain't happy with you you know, if, if <laughs> in another particular area, and he didn't call you for that. That's just downright telling God, I ain't going to obey you.